We are glad to welcome you to our channel. Kindly subscribe to our channel and share our videos with your friends and relations. And click on the bell icon for instant notification whenever new videos are uploaded on this channel. Rest assured that we are going to have a very exciting and inspiring discussion. Let's dive into the lesson right away. Hello and welcome to our series on Mastering English for the West African Senior School Certificate Examination. Today, we are diving into an important aspect of pronunciation, which is word stress. Understanding word stress can greatly improve your English pronunciation and help you score higher in your exams. This is English Classes Online, and as usual, I am your host, Benjamin. Let's get started right away. To begin with the agenda for this lesson. The following areas will be covered. Number one, what is word stress? Two, why learn word stress? Or why should we learn word stress? Three, what are the factors that determine stress? Four, what are the rules of stress? And of course, we are going to illustrate with real WASI English questions, specifically from the year 2020. Let's begin with the first basic question. What actually is word stress? Word stress is the extra force used in pronouncing a word or a syllable to make it sound louder and longer. Word stress is also known as syllable stress because in a word of two or more syllables, stress on a particular syllable within the word. Let's look at some examples. The word education. You can see that we break the word into one, two, three, four syllables. Education. And then stress is placed on the third syllable from the beginning or the second syllable from the end of the word. We indicate syllable here by using capital letters. Another example is responsibility. Responsibility. One, two, three, four, five, six syllables. And stress is placed on the second syllable from the end I mean the third syllable from the end of the word. One, two, three. Stress is placed here. Responsibility. Now, the next word is democratic. Democratic. Notice stress indicated with capital letters. The next one is banana. Banana. All right? And then we have musician, musician. Now let's look at why should we learn stress? Stress is used to communicate meaning clearly in English speech. Consider the word project. And so we pronounce the word project when we use it as a noun meaning a piece of work undertaken. You know, we are, um, we are embarking on a new project, project, a piece of work undertaken. Then if we pronounce it as project, it means we are using the same word as a verb, which means to communicate clearly, to project your idea to the audience to communicate your idea clearly to the audience. Now notice that it is the same word 
P R O J E C T. But stress is used to make the meaning clear in each case. Place stress on the first syllable, and what you have is a noun, project. Place stress on the second syllable, and what you have is a verb, project. So it helps us, that means stress helps us to convey our intended meaning and communicate our ideas accurately and more clearly. Misuse of stress leads to mispronunciation of words, which distorts meaning and results in a communication breakdown. So this is why we learn stress. We learn stress because we want to communicate our intended meaning. We want to communicate accurate meaning without distorting the meaning of the words. Okay? Let's look at factors that determine stress. The first one is word class or what is traditionally known as part of speech. Now, for example, we, we have just dealt with uh, shifting stress, such as when you pronounce this word as project, to use it as a noun, the part of speech noun, or you place stress on the second syllable and you pronounce this project to use it as a verb. So, uh, the, where you place stress here depends on the part of speech. If it is a noun, place stress on the first syllable. If it is a verb, place stress on the second syllable. So this actually is a rule. Uh, it's a rule. It's one of the rules of stress that, you know, when a uh, two syllable word is used as a noun and also as a verb. Stress the first syllable when it is a noun and stress the second syllable when it is a verb. Now, the second factor that determines stress is syllables. Because we place stress on a particular syllable within a word. So, when we are dealing with uh, monosyllabic words or bisyllabic words, or polysyllabic words, then, you know, our rules of stress differ. You know, the rules that apply to monosyllabic words are different from the rules that apply to bisyllabic words. By the way, monosyllabic words are words of one syllable. Bisyllabic words are words of two syllables. Polysyllabic words are words of three or more syllables. And then, we have strong and weak syllables as well, and all these determine how we place stress. Okay, now the third factor is affixes, which uh, consist of prefixes and suffixes. Now, prefixes are almost always on stress, except in shifting stress. Okay, and so. When we look at suffixes, uh, suffixes determine stress in polysyllabic words. We are going to look at them when we discuss rules of stress. Then words ending in suffixes such as ION, IAN, IAL, IC, all these have similar uh, place of stress. Uh, of course, is one of the rules for polysyllabic uh, stressing polysyllabic words. We are going to look at them when we begin to deal with the rules for stress. And now this brings us to rules for stress placement. What are the rules? Rule number one, if a two-syllable word is used as a noun and also as a verb, stress the first syllable when it is a noun and stress the second syllable when it is a verb. For example, project as in a noun, project as a verb, export, export, import, import, etc. All right. So the second rule is if a two-syllable word is used as a noun and also as an adjective, stress the first syllable when it is a noun and stress the second syllable when it is an adjective. For example, august as a noun, august as an adjective, adult as a noun, adult as an adjective. Rule number three, 
If a two-syllable word is used as an adjective and also as a verb, stress the first syllable when it is an adjective and stress the second syllable when it is a verb. For example, present as an adjective, present as a verb, absent as an adjective, absent as a verb, frequent, frequent, and so on and so forth. This brings us to rule number four. Most two-syllable nouns and adjectives are stressed on the first syllable, but most two-syllable verbs are stressed on the second syllable. So we, this, is, this rule is derived from the previous rules, and examples are window, Monday, these are all nouns, hostel, etc. Then adjectives, gentle, easy, righteous, prosper, or proper, all right? Proper, of course. Now, uh, but talking about verbs, stress is always on the second syllable, produce, report, narrate, transfer, dictate, denounce, reject, etc. Rule number five, if a two-syllable word begins with a prefix, stress the second syllable. This is because a prefix is almost always unstressed. Examples, disturb, uh, the prefix here is this and is not stressed. You stress the second syllable. Disturb, unfair, unknown, return, rewire, remake, enjoy, impound, observe, desist, about, expand, confirm, uh, I mean conform, between, invite, etc. Rule number six. Of course, before we get to rule number six, take note of the fact that these rules apply more to verbs, ad uh, adverbs, and prepositions. The prefix is stressed for a noun that can also be used as a verb. For example, exports, uh, I mean export, export, import, import, convict, convict, object, object, Ex expense, expense, uh, abscess, and so on and so forth. Rule number six, for words that end in the following suffixes, they almost always take a stress on the second syllable from the end. For example, suffixes like I-O-N, uh, I-C, I-A-L, I-A-N, I-E-N, I-O-U-S, and T-A-N-T, or A-N-T. For example, communication, supervision, demarcation, atomic, dramatic, take note of where stress is placed, strategic, Democratic, economic, colonial, proverbial, tutorial, civilian, commercial, uh, comedian, musician, sufficient, deficient, ingredient, uh, contentious, righteous, important, pollutant, etc. Now, take note of this, the procedure for, you know, placing stress if you are in an exam hall and you are giving words to determine where stress is placed, if it's a polysyllabic word ending in IC, what you do is to break the word first into syllables, democratic, and then you number them from the end. One, two, three, four. Place stress on the second syllable, and that is democratic. Okay. Rule number seven for words of three syllables of, or more that end in the suffixes ty, nate, -E, they, they almost always have anti penultimate stress, that is stress on the set on the third syllable from the end stress on the third syllable from the end let's look at examples cab 
activity. You see, this is one, two, three, the third syllable. Curiosity, finality, inferiority, variability, dependability, fortunate, unfortunate, delicate, necessitate, articulate, inoculate, reveal, Gorez, monopolize, economize, apologize, subsidize, etc. Now again, you break the word into syllables and number from the end of the word. One, two, three, four, five. The rule says you should place stress on the third syllable from the end, so stress should be on V, Rin, V, Garrett. Okay? Rule number eight words that end in EE, -E, three syllables or more, especially nouns with EE, -E, which gives you the long E sound. E. They are always stressed on the first syllable from the end. That is, you stress on the on the last syllable. For example, absentee, detainee, nominee, reportee. You know, these are usually words of French origin. Okay? N Rule number nine, stress the fourth syllable from the end for four syllable words and more if the word ends in ism or able. For example, revivalism. So here you come from the end. Zim is one. Li, that's two, three, four. The fourth syllable from the end. Revisionism. Tribalism. Impossible. Impalpable improbable, and so on and so forth, okay? Still on rules of stress, rule number 10, for words of four, five, and six syllables that end in able or able and are introduced by the following prefixes, in, income, inad, incor, in the, they are almost always stressed on the syllable that follows the prefix beginning, uh, you know, beginning the word, at the beginning of the word, okay? In other words, you just uh, skip the, the prefix and stress the next syllable after the prefix. For example, the prefix here is inco, inco, rob. In incompatible the prefix and stress the next syllable after the prefix. For example, the prefix here is inco incorruptible in incompatible incompatible. Of course, because compatible is a word, but then incompatible. All right? Inadmissible. Inadmissible. And so on and so forth. So you just keep the prefix and you stress the next syllable. And so this brings us to the 2020 English language three objective uh, questions uh, on test of orals. And we're looking at section four. The instruction is in each of the following questions, the main or primary stress is indicated by writing the syllable on which it occurs in capital letters. 
from the white a, a letter A to D, choose the one that has the correct stress. And we are going to deal with questions 36 to, to 40. Now let's begin with question number 36. The word given is overwhelming. Okay, so you are given this word and you are given options A to D. So here, uh, let's go through the options. You see, here stress is on, in A, stress on the first syllable. But can you say overwhelming? Well, we shall see B, overwhelming sounds unnatural. C, overwhelming sounds, sounds, you know, really natural. And then D, overwhelming, it doesn't sound natural. So sometimes what you need to do, because the answer here is C, over. Well, mean in, in a situation where you have a word and it doesn't, uh, you don't uh, remember any uh, applicable rule, you use the rule of intuition, pronounce it repeatedly to your hearing, and by rule of intuition, you'll be able to pick the one that sounds natural. So the rule here is in the absence of any applicable rule, use your intuition. Uh, just as you go through it, and you say, A, overwhelming, sounds unnatural. B, overwhelming, sounds unnatural. C, overwhelming, sounds natural. You, 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 as as a, an English language speaker, as a user of this language, over time, you have stored in your subconscious mind, you know, uh, the the accurate pronunciation of uh, most English words. So if you just uh, try to use your intuition, you know you'll be able to pick the accurate uh, the accurate option. Where you have an applicable rule, you use or apply the rule. Question number thirty seven, melancholy. Well. A, melancholy, sounds a bit natural. B, melancholy may sound natural to a second language speaker, but not to uh, a native speaker. Melancholy sounds completely unnatural, so it's eliminated. Uh, melancholy. You know, is C. Melancholy is D. You know, it sounds unnatural. So the accurate option is A. Melancholy. Okay. And again, in the absence of any applicable rule, use your intuition. Question number 38 Inflammation. A. Inflammation. Sounds unnatural. B. Inflammation. Sounds unnatural. C. Inflammation. Sounds natural. D. Inflammation. Sounds unnatural. So even before you be apply the rule, you can begin with the rule of intuition. And once you are able to pick the correct, the one that sounds natural, then of course you are good to go. But then here we have an applicable rule. Of course, the answer is C, inflammation. And you can remember that the rule has to do with the suffix. The suffix, you know, is I-O-N. And of course, for words that end in the following suffixes, they almost always take a stress on the second syllable from the end. And one of them is I-O-N, which is what applies here. Others include IC, IAL, IAN, IEN, IOUS, TANT, and so on. So we have an applicable rule here. So we, we place stress on the second syllable from the end of the word. Again, don't forget, we break the word into syllables and we count 
from the end of the world. Question number 39, calculation. Then A, calculation, terms on natural. Calculation, that is B, sounds unnatural. Calculation, sounds natural. So we, we pick it already, even without applying the rule. We apply the rule of intuition. D, calculation, sounds unnatural, okay? So the, the, the correct option is C, even based on, on uh, intuition, we were able to get this correctly. But then we have an applicable rule for words that end in the following suffixes. They almost always take stress on the second syllable from the end of the word. And the one that applies here is uh, I-O-N, calculation. Second syllable from the end of the word. And the last but not the least question, question number 40, we have economic. The, the option A is economic. No, it sounds unnatural. Economic sounds unnatural. Economic sounds natural. Economic sounds unnatural. So the correct option is C, economic. Okay? And the rule is also about the suffix. For words that end in suffixes such as IC, IAL, IAN, IEN, IOUS, I, I mean TANT, all these, you know, including ION, you know, uh, you stress the second syllable from the end of the word. Okay? And of course, uh, this is where we draw the curtains on today's lesson. Remember that mastering word stress takes practice, but with these tips and tricks that we have discussed, you will be well on your way to pronouncing English words like a native speaker. Thank you for watching today's episode and see you in the next class. Many thanks for watching today's video. A big thank you to all of you out there for being part of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, kindly subscribe to this channel. Subscribe now as a way of giving us support. For notification about new videos, click on the bell icon. You will find the bell icon click on it so that whenever a new video is uploaded you will be instantly notified if you have actually enjoyed the video like and share the video with your friends and relatives this is very important if you have any comments leave your comments below any questions any suggestions we would gladly receive them and respond promptly and positively to them see you in the next video i look forward to always see you in the new video thank you and remain blessed incompatible of course because compatible is a word but then incompatible